this procedure is on installing backup for work groups, a great little backup program. I've downloaded the program and I'm now running the installation package. It's quite straightforward, just simply click next, next, next. Setting up for the first time will install the data repository manager as well as the actual client. If you already have a data repository set up on one of the servers, then all you need to do is install the actual client. In this case, we do want to install this computer in the backup process, so this is where it's prompting to install the actual client as well. We'll install in the default setup locations, and now we select where we want the actual backup information to be stored. In this case, the selected default repository is the USB drive on the system, so that's exactly where we want to store it to. You will want to run this as a service, so enter the domain administrative username and password in order to enable it to load as a service. Here you want to specify the server name and details in order to transmit emails. Here specify where you want the backup reports to be sent and hit next. If you have purchased the Open File Manager license, you should leave this option selected on, which will enable you to back up Exchange, SQL and other information. Set the backup time and days and hit Next again. The installation then proceeds. After this, the Repository Manager opens showing the details and then the client also opens enabling you to do a backup now. To set particular backup set information go to manage backup sets and you can modify or create a new backup set. You can rename it, set which folders are to be backed up. Once you've selected the relevant was that you want to have backed up, click on Next. The relevant schedule that you want the backup to occur at. By default, you'll leave it to exclude the recycle bin, swap bin and paging files as it's unnecessary to back those up. If the server is running as a terminal server, you will want to enable it to shut down Outlook so it can back up PSTs, etc. In this case, it's not, so we'll leave that off. And we'll also set it to write results to the event log. Another good feature of backup for work groups is you can actually get it to shut down particular services during the backup. So for example, if you don't have the open files agent, you can get it to shut down the Microsoft Information Store during the backup and also the SQL service, for example. And it will then be able to back up those offline folders during the backup and will automatically restart them after it has finished. Click Next and Finish, and that completes the backup process. So that's now scheduled to automatically back up at 11 p.m. at night. Back on the Repository Manager, you will notice that if you go to Tools and License, you can't actually enter the license number. You need to install the separate License Installer program in order to do this. In this case, we install the BFW License Setup program and you can then put in your license number and add the license. You can then initialise a backup saying to shut down the relevant services we selected before it then proceeds on to start backing up the files. Now it's shutting down the Microsoft Exchange Information Store and the backup is now backing up the selected file sets onto the USB drive. If you're handling multiple clients and want to configure it so that it's quite clear where the backups come from, it's also advisable to go up to Tools and Preferences in the Data Repository Manager and go to the Backup Run emails and set who the actual emails are from. Receive the email, it will be quite easy to identify which actual client it has come from. You should also do the same for the storage event email. So set the from address, the display name and the to address. You'll note here that depending on what event is occurring, that notifications will be sent to the backup checker email address. The backup will continue to trundle along and once it does complete, you'll receive 
a very intuitive and easy to read backup log message in HTML format. Here's an example backup email that's received. In this case, we're running three servers. All the backups were successful. It's very easy to identify whether it's successful or not. Further down, it shows summaries of the total amount of bytes backed up, uh, deleted, and so on for each of those. So it makes it very quick and easy to identify which files have been backed up successfully or not. 